So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you the three reasons why I think the Singapore property market is stable despite rising interest rates and the rounds of cooling measures. So welcome back, this is Zoe. So let's jump right into the first reason. And the reason number one is we have a stable real demand from the local market. So if you were to look at this table, it shows the transactions of new and resale condos by residential status. So you would realise that despite the lockdowns worldwide for the past two years, the majority of transactions are done by Singaporeans and it's largely the same as before the pandemic, which is about 77 to 80% of the total transactions in Singapore. So this also means our local demands for homes is stable and not having as many foreigners coming over for the past two to three years during COVID did not really impact the property market as much. So this shows the real demands for homes and that our property market is not speculative at all. And that brings us to the next point. So the second reason is due to our robust cooling measures. We have had 13 rounds of cooling measures for both private and public residential properties since 2009. So this chart shows how the property price index of the various types of properties, landed and non-landed, private and HDB flats have performed thus far. So this Cooling measures include seller stamp duty, uh, which is a tax imposed on the sale of a property within three years of purchase. So that would have eliminated a lot of the speculative uh, bias. The cooling measures also included the adjustment of the loan to value or LTV ratio, which allows borrowers to borrow up to 75% of the property value for bank loans and up to 80% for HDB loans. And there is also the tightening of the mortgage servicing ratio MSR and the total debt servicing ratio TDSR so that borrowers can only loan up to a certain percentage of our income to make sure that we are not over leveraging. So the cooling measures are also adjusted to stay relevant to market conditions. So for example, in the recent cooling measures introduced in September 2022, the banks and HDB will now need to use a higher interest rate to calculate the maximum loan amount a borrower can take in response to the interest rate hikes. So all these measures have made the Singapore property market very different from the property markets in other developed countries. So the market is not speculative in nature and the cooling measures ensure that the borrowers are not borrowing more than what they can afford. Now the third reason why the Singapore property market is stable is because the supply of homes have not caught up with the demand yet. So according to BCA or the Building and Construction Authority in Singapore, this is shown in their media release on the 12th Jan 2023, the total construction demand this year is likely to reach between 27 to 32 billion Sing dollars. And from 2024 to 2027, BCA expects the demand to rise further to 25 to 32 billion per year, driven mainly by the public sector, especially in building projects. So BCA also expects the private construction demand to remain steady at 11 to 14 billion per year due to Singapore's robust economic fundamentals, which have attracted a lot of healthy investment commitment. So while the demand is strong, the construction sector is still uh, trying to meet both the demands and deadlines because of the higher material costs as well as a continuous lack of labour. So the outbreak of war in Ukraine where most of the world's metal supplies come from have sent metal prices soaring through the roof. So to make matters worse ever since the reopening of the borders, one in three workers are returning home. So they are usually the more experienced workers who have become emotionally drained due to the tight COVID restrictions that were placed on them. So as younger and less experienced workers took over to replace them, uh, it also meant a drop in productivity because essentially their skill levels are lower. So as the supply struggles to keep up with the rising demand, we expect home prices to hold stable or even rise until the construction sector recovers fully. So in summary, the Singapore property market is largely stable despite the rising interest rates, also because the high interest rates have not come to a certain point where the mortgages are no longer affordable. So while inflation and interest rates are expected to remain high in the short term, any surprise cuts in the rates are expected to send demand and home prices rising again. So moreover, the supply of new homes have not caught up with the demand that's driven by genuine local appetite. So this year, there will be about 43 new projects that will be launched by the developers. So if you're wondering how new condo prices will impact the property market, do check out the next video in the link.